Welcome back to Frederick Advice Givers. I am Eric Verdi. And this week I bring to you John Genua. Right? At Minty Good Clean. Um, John has been in the community for a while. He yep. started, it's your brother. Brother or? Brother in law started the business. Brother in law started the business. Correct. And you've been with him for about two years now? Myself, uh, a little bit. Full time, one year. Okay. June. Okay. This June was one year. Okay. So met John how about three months ago through a mutual friend of yep. ours, Natalie. Natalie. Um, who also does residential cleaning, she along does. with about 18,000 other things that she does. She does. She's she a very does. busy woman. She does a lot. Um, so wanted to bring to you this week, John, he's got a great story, great backstory. He's really uh, helping grow Minty Clean up and down the 270 corridor. corridor. Yep. And then you just, uh, we'll talk about this, but you just got a nice new job here in Frederick. We did. Uh, so John, before we get into Minty Clean, Give us your backstory, origin story, where did you grow up, what do you enjoy doing in spare time, etc. Origin story, who am I? Well, to most, I'm a little rough around the edges, um, but I am a man of faith. Okay. I'm a husband, and I'm a father of three crazy, mazy boys. Um, they definitely keep us on our toes and kind of run the roost right now. Okay. But life is good. So what do you do? Uh like what, what are your boys' activities? So are you following them around? Are they playing sports? Are they doing camps? We, what are they doing now? We wrestle. Okay. We swim. We soccer. We are on and off with baseball. Trying to get them into lacrosse. I haven't had any bites yet, but I think there's something they would really enjoy. Dude, lacrosse is huge now. It is. I've got, we live down in Urbana and um, we've got three or four friends that play on like the Team Maryland lacrosse mm -hmm. team. And they, I mean, when I was growing up, so I grew up here in Frederick. Sure. Um, graduate high school, well, we have our 25th reunion, so 25 years ago, um, lacrosse was just starting out. Yep, you know, same was, way. Yeah, s same thing. Like it was just starting to get popular when I was finishing up high school. I was like, that looked like that would have been a lot of fun. Right, yeah, we mm -hmm. had the Hopkins, and even I went to Salisbury, and they were great lacrosse. Mm -hmm. uh, but now, dude, it is it is taking over. Yep. Um, so where did you grow up? I grew up in Clarksburg. Okay, so not uh, far away. Yeah, I went to, when I was still, when I was growing up, it was still going to Damascus. Okay. Um, then shortly after that, we realized that Montgomery County had just grown too much. It's not where we wanted to live, so we moved into Frederick. Mm -hmm. And then we went to Mount Airy, and now we are back in Frederick County in Union Bridge. Okay, well, Frederick's starting to grow up like Montgomery County. Very much so. It sucks, mm -hmm. in my opinion. Um, so why did you, where, and where is your wife from? I rescued her from Western Pennsylvania. Okay, yep. so why do you guys choose to settle down in Frederick, in the Frederick area? Just love the community, Okay. love the people. Um, you know, it's kind of through, again, our sports and everything that we do, that's where you kind of found your village because it takes a village. And we got found a lot of people that are investing in, in our boys. Okay. Um, and just love the community and the feeling that it has and the sense of closeness and pride in the community itself. Awesome. Yeah. And what's your wife do? She's a teacher. Okay, where? She was at private school for a while and she started public school this fall in um, Clopper Mill, okay. Montgomery County. So Montgomery County. Yep. Nice. Yeah, my wife being a teacher and we have a lot of friends that are a teacher, it's definitely financially beneficial to go to Montgomery County instead it of Frederick County. And she starts her master's this fall too, so she's looking forward to getting that going. Awesome. Yep. Awesome. So tell us about Minty Clean, the backstory for Minty Clean. So the long story short, uh, the company itself has actually been around for 18 years. Okay. Um, my brother-in-law started for his mom. She just wanted, she retired, wanted to stay busy. So mm -hmm. they didn't want to grow it into anything more than just keeping her busy, but she didn't want to do anything with the paperwork as a business. She just wanted to go clean and stay busy. So he started that company for her. Okay. And then let it go for, I guess, about 12 years. And then about four years ago, maybe five years, my math is not my strong suit, but um, she passed. And he was like, all right, what do I do with this company? Do, not really anything I can sell, but right. it is profitable, as small as it was. Right. So he kind of let it limp along for a couple of years and then realized there's something there. And he wanted to warn it. And, and he wanted to, in a way of carrying on her legacy, right. but also just all the profitability and the opportunities that were there. So he started, making a go at it. And then I came along, like I started helping them on and off part-time. Okay. Um, but then I came on full-time last year. And you guys are strictly commercial? Strictly commercial. We focusing on Frederick County and Montgomery County for right okay. now. There's okay. plenty of business to saturate that before we even expand outside of that. So are you yourself going out cleaning? When need be. Okay. We're, we're trying to scale and put the right systems in place so I can focus on 
the business and the growth right. of the business as opposed to having a mop in my hand. But it, there's at times when it's necessary. You know, people call out, people are sick. So you have employees or you have contractors? Both. Okay. We have most are going to be employees. Okay. Um, we do have a couple that are 1099, mm -hmm. but for the most part, I would say 90% of our staff is employees. Gotcha. Gotcha. All right. So let's take this back to a personal level for a few minutes. Sure. What's the last purchase that you splurged on for yourself or your family? I would say what we were talking about earlier, the farm. Okay. You know, we're, we've always thought we wanted a farm mm -hmm. and it's allowing us to scratch that itch, but it's kind of the best of both worlds because it's 45 acres, but I only have to maintain an acre of it. Um, there's longhorns on the property, there's creeks on the property, so we can do all kinds of redneck stuff and awesome. have fun. Awesome. And John, what hobby or interest, you know, outside of work and maybe outside of being on the farm, maybe it might be being on the farm, right? Uh, could you spend hours doing to kind of get your mind away from work? Anything outside. Okay. I love being outside. Um, my new latest hobby, which is going to be hard to do living in Frederick County, is what I think is going to be hobby is surfing. Really? Um, yeah, doesn't really fit with Frederick County, but we well, took a trip down. To, that we took a trip down to Florida. Okay, and we were at Cocoa Beach, which I've never been. Which, if you haven't, it's beautiful. Um, and I saw a couple of people surfing. And I was like, you know what? I'm gonna try it. And got there, and they said, "Would you like lessons?" I was like, "Nah, I got this." Well, two hours later, I found out it sucked. But it was the three times that I got up in two hours. It was absolutely beautiful. Like it was just everything. So you I, didn't do lessons. You didn't know nah, going to do just lessons. Hard headed. Just went for it. So you got up. You like actually were standing or like on your knees. No, I got up three times. Really? It took me two hours. Wow. And probably fell about a hundred. But the three times I got up, it was because it's always something I wanted to do. Right. Like I, you know, just water in general, whether it's a creek, a river, a bay, an ocean, it just is very calming for me for whatever reason. And as I, I always wanted to surf, and I had the opportunity, so I did it. And again. I mean, I had rash all over, right. beat up for two hours, but the three times I got up for more than five seconds, it was beautiful. So kind of like golf. Those three, those um, three, horrible golf. The, well, the three good hits yes. that you have in golf keep you coming back for yes. more. Absolutely. <laughs> I wouldn't even say what I actually do is considered golf. Right. But right on. Yes. So, John, when you wake up in the morning, what's that drive inside of you? What's that why that keeps you going? So you're doing this full time, right? Yes. You quit your other career? Yep. Okay. Full time. So what's the why? What's what's your drive? What's your purpose? Easily my family. Okay. You know, I, I once we had kids, mm -hmm. it just changed my whole view on life. Right. It was wow. You know, these these little dudes are I'm responsible for. Mm -hmm. And not only am I responsible for them physically, mentally, emotionally, putting a roof over their head, feeding them. They look up to me, which in some ways is very scary. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and it is. It's how. Of course, as parents, we all want our kids to be better than we are, to have a better life than we had. But more importantly for me, I'm realizing it's what kind of example am I setting? And it's being able to humble myself and apologize to a six-year-old when I know I failed. Right. When I failed them or I just didn't set the best example and say, dude, I'm sorry. Um, but that's my why. You know, what kind of legacy, what kind of example am I leading and showing my boys? Right. Yeah, man, your kids, I've got, yours are, you said 11, 9, and 7? This summer, yep, 11, 9, and 7. And so mine are 12 and 10, so we're about, you know, similar age. Sure. They're always watching you, man. They are. They're always, you know. Good, bad, and the indifferent. It, it, pretty much, yep. pretty much. And what, you know, what I've found is, is uh, you know, I think is, is personally real important is, is how you treat other people and how you yep. interact with other people. And they, they take that as an example. Um, you know, I'm, I'm proud of, of how my boys, uh, you know, if there's somebody less fortunate or right. might look a little different in class um, or whatever, might, you know. We I, all put our pants on the same way. Right. But, yep. yeah, it's, you know, some kids can be mean. And they can. I've taught my boys that, you know, you kind of, as an example, you treat everybody like you want to be treated, really. Yep, absolutely. Because they're always watching. All right, so, John, so what advice... I mean, you've been doing this, and you don't own the business, but you have ownership stake in the business, yes. or your partner. Yep. Uh, you didn't start the business, but you, you're, you're intimately involved, and it is, you're kind of the face of Minty Clean, right? Yes. Okay. So, what advice or shortcut uh, would you give an entrepreneur, business owner, kind of just starting out? Probably the, the 
the biggest uh aha and the biggest man that really helped me a lot as i was new to this industry you know i've been doing sales i've been doing business development marketing business growth for 12 15 years professionally but very new to this industry an infant in this industry um and what has helped me tremendously is use the resources outside of your market you know meaning find someone who's doing what you're doing okay call them pick up a phone you know i made calls to cleaning companies in texas calls to cleaning companies in north carolina um you obviously you're not going to get a whole lot from people in your backyard because you're in their money they're in your money mm -hmm. so everyone's a little sensitive about giving away trade secrets and you know methods and mayhem but when you reach outside it's going to take several calls because some people are just busy and they don't want to like who's this guy but you're going to find that one person that will give you 15 minutes will give you half hour will continue to allow you to follow up and kind of mentor you right from multiple states away because people like to talk about themselves too and you find someone who's been successful <laughs> and they're willing to share and that was very influential for me and helped me a ton reaching out and finding that person who's been there and done that and i don't care what business you're going into or, or starting someone's done it and has done it successfully and you be persistent and you, you you make those multiple phone calls and hell sometimes get on a plane go see them go right. see their operation go see what they're doing and a lot of people are again as long as you're not in their pockets they're willing to open the doors and share yep yeah Tremendous. i think uh well I, even if you the very successful ones mm -hmm they love mentoring and giving back yes absolutely. you know everybody you know you have you have your your, your people that are in business two or three years yep. kind of plod along and then they get out they you know they, they they didn't have a passion for it yep then you've got like the middle 80 percent 70 percent they kind of you know muddle along they're they're somewhat successful mm -hmm. they can pay their bills then you've got that top 10 or 20 percent if you can find somebody in that top 10 or 20 percent they are typically uh, want to give back they're yes. very helpful they're they're confident in their position in their business yes you know when i first started out uh you know what i do to make money is in real estate um you know like trish mills mm -hmm. i can call her up and she's like the short sale expert you mm -hmm. know she knows a, a segment of the market that frankly uh, i don't have an expertise in right. or cassandra bailey is uh she does for, foreclosures and reos like i have them i can call them and they're always you know always the top of the, the top dogs that are right. really really successful they're always willing to, to share their experiences yep. with you so that's a that's a great piece of advice somebody um you know that's been there done that yep um, and you're right the the more successful they are they are so confident in what they're doing and quite frankly they've already made their money right and now kind of what i've seen and i'm no way shape or form there yet but from what i've seen through podcasts through reading books through lectures through marketing is once you reach a certain level like that's when it gets really exciting when right. you know you're comfortable and now it's time for you to start giving back exactly and pouring into other people and help them get to where you are exactly mm -hmm. all right john so on the flip side of the advice mm -hmm. what is something that you've learned over the last year year and a half or maybe something that somebody said would happen mm -hmm. um, that didn't turn out like they, they, they said it would. Okay. So one thing I've learned is if someone is a self-proclaimed guru, <laughs> run. <laughs> no, I, I take that back. Because you can learn one of the smartest, one of the best quotes I've ever heard is you can learn something from everyone. doesn't matter how stupid they are. Right. So you can learn good and bad, what to do, what not to do. But if someone's walking around saying they're a guru, I normally shut off right away. See you. Um, but one of the things I've learned and one of the, the cliches I've heard that now I kind of look at, I'm like, no, nah, that's not right, is there's no I in team. Right. You know, everyone says that, but I disagree to a point. And if what I mean by that is I do not undervalue the team at all. Right. And without your team in place, you cannot have success. Your team is invaluable. But what I've learned is it starts at the top. I was just going to say there needs to be a hierarchy. There, there needs to be a top. To there needs to be are. someone driving. There needs to be someone with the vision. There needs to be someone who knows where they want to go and how to get there. And then you put your team in place to make that happen. And then if you're smart, you hire people that are smarter than you, right. which for me would not be that difficult. <laughs> um, but without that person at top, the team's not going to go anywhere. The business isn't going to go anywhere. There's no vision. There's no drive. There's no um it, it all runs downhill right you know good or bad i've seen you know being in corporate america for a long time i've seen both 
and I've seen the impact of both, where it's great leadership or poor leadership, and it always trickles down. Right. Um, so, you know, to say that there's no I in team, I, I, I disagree. I think there's got to be that person at the helm, man or woman, that is, that is driving and, you know, is leading the team. With that being said, again, the team is invaluable. And there's different ways to lead too. Absolutely. You, know, you lead by example, you lead, uh, are you a strict leader? Are right. you, uh, uh, you know, you're a passionate, but are, are you concerned about your people? Or are you just yep. concerned about the bottom line? I think there's different ways to lead too. And I think the biggest thing is it's always better to lead and have them respect you as opposed to have them fear you. You can still be strict, but still have their respect. Right, right. Mm. So John, the last three years, what's a choice or a decision that you've made that's led you to where you are today? Could be personally or uh, business-wise. So for me, on my journey, which is it's just beginning, I feel like it, it hasn't been one defining choice. Okay. What I've learned is that it's the subtle mundane choices we make every day that are compounded over lengths of time. Where, you know, for example, if you don't, health you know oh if i if i eat this it's just a little bit but if you eat a donut every single day in three or five years it adds up right. if you don't eat that donut every day it adds up but for me it's it's the subtle choices we make every day that have a compounding effect again good or bad right so it hadn't been this one light bulb or this one big explosion of ideas or choice it's, it's been understanding the importance of the little everyday choices that compound over time. I think it was Darren Hardy that wrote the book, uh, the one percent, one percent journey, or one percent effect. Is, mm -hmm. is you just want to improve the compound so, effect? I think the guy from the yeah, with the, improve, he's one of the magazines. But yes, I read it. It's a phenomenal book. Yeah, you want to improve a little bit, one percent yep. each day. Absolutely. And over the over your, over the course of a year or multiple years, uh, you know, you're improving, and yep. it's it's hard to to take a step forward every day. It is. It's very hard to take a step forward every day. It is. But when you focus on those little choices, and you know, you're not always in it for the instant gratification. Over the course of a week, a month, a year, two years, three years, the, the compound effect. You know, we always hear about the compound effect of investing. Right monetarily but invest in yourself in, in yourself exactly right. and that compound effect holds true there too exactly yep all right john so we've met before yep we've had coffee uh we've kind of shared some war stories mm -hmm. uh you've actually been to uh the impact club amazing um, by the way thank you if you haven't been check it out good thank man doing good things for the community so you are episode 184 I've sat across the microphone. I've sure. interviewed 183 other people. I learn by asking questions. Sure. I want to flip the script okay. and have you ask me a question. It can be anything, personal, business, health, wellness, whatever right. you want to ask. All right. So I got two questions for you. Uh, if you know me long enough, I will ask you at some point, what is your favorite meal? And it can consist of store-bought, restaurant, homemade cooking, but give me an appetizer, a main course with beverage, Hmm. and a dessert it could be any combination <clears throat> all right so the appetizer would probably just be a really good uh, capri salad the tomato with uh mozzarella mozzarella, really mozzarella a little balsamic a little balsamic and oil nice. and then uh some basil on top yep <sighs> last best meal would be i would actually prepare it yep. um I have this about once a week. Uh, it would be a nice big Costco New York strip. There you go. Uh, on a, uh, a a sizzling plate. Yes. Um, I, I prepare it on my big green egg. Um, it's amazing, amazing um, dessert. I am not a huge dessert fan, but just getting back from uh, my wife and I and two boys and actually both parents, uh, we're, we were in Italy. Um, nice. Love, Where'd you go? We went to... It's a rental region for three days, okay. which is Amalfi um, Coast. Okay. We had uh, uh, Sorrento's a town. We were on top of the town looking down uh, into the Mediterranean, onto the town. That was awesome. I'm sure uh, it was beautiful. About an hour away from Pompeii. Okay. So we drove to Pompeii one day. Three days in Rome, and then we did a cruise around the western side mm -hmm. of Italy. Um, so it would be gelatos. Nice. A gelato. A nice. I don't know exactly what flavor. You know, I, I tested so many Just over the there. Just the consistency. Yeah. Hit a spot. Mm -hmm. it, gelatos are, it's different than ice cream, right. but they are, are so good. So good. So Capri, steak, gelato. Drinking? Miller Lite. 
and you could have a breakfast or a, not breakfast but you could have a different drink with your dinner or break i can't speak with dessert as well uh or is miller light your dessert miller light's my my go-to anybody Understood. knows me he's a miller light now there might be a back in the younger days there might have been a shot or 15 involved but we'll just, <laughs> we'll just stick with a miller light or two now correct. <laughs> correct all right uh second question as well as you know the minty clean i'm always and right now working on another form of passive income in real estate mm -hmm. it's obviously your right. home where right. you where you hang your hat and i want to create a portfolio of rental income mm -hmm. where do you see the market today and where do you see it in the next year um so i'll speak on a uh, micro level of frederick mm -hmm. okay because that's what i know yep um in 2000 five right before the downturn in in the market was about a year and a half away i could feel locally that mm -hmm. something happened right in august 2005. Mm -hmm. so uh, you know locally here with with the amount of growth that's going on and sure. residential not i'm personally not a fan of it mm -hmm. um, as far as the new construction as, there, as far as the new construction mm -hmm. i think um, if you uh, it's going to be harder to go this route but i would say if you could get into uh, commercial investing okay would probably be where where i would be focusing okay. uh, my, my revenue my income um, as far as um, you know what i've seen um, if you do residential I would find a highly desirable area like mm -hmm. downtown Frederick, mm -hmm. like outskirts of DC. Uh, my wife and I, we re recently purchased a place in Ocean City. Okay. Um, We're at uh, right on 45th Street, right uh, Oceanside. Nice. My folks retired there on 130th, Montego okay. Bay. Okay. That's, oh. that's beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. Um, it's find a place where you can do Airbnb. Okay. Where you can do daily, weekly rentals. Mm -hmm. um, the income potential there, I believe, is much higher. Okay, so you're not doing uh, then just your traditional renting month long rent. Okay, it's just your traditional yearly rental. Mm -hmm. um, now there is more management involved. Sure. Uh, we are fortunate enough <laughs> down there that we have an awesome cleaning company, nice. e Easy Breeze, that we work with. They uh, email me after every time, say what the tenants broke, didn't break, if they were really good. Nice. Um, I think if you're looking to get into investing, uh, a, a good place would be find find fi find a destination spot. Could okay. be Deep Creek. Could be Ocean City, could be Rehoboth, could be downtown Frederick. Um, a good friend of mine, another realtor, Aaron Marsh, has a place in downtown Frederick that he does Airbnb. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's a good way uh, to get in at a at a lower cost um, and to, to get some good income. Duly going. noted. Cool. I've never, I mean, I've, I've, obviously everyone's heard of a Airbnb, whatever it's called. Right. Um, but I don't know much about it, but definitely something to look into and research yeah I think if, if you want to get into real estate investing either commercial but those those costs are so absorbent you mm -hmm. know especially in Frederick your commercial is not my industry but you're probably 400 to 2 million right uh, in residential you can get something for 150 to 250 right to get it much easier to very start good out. appreciate it cool yep all right final two questions here uh -huh. so what coming down to the wire failure or loss this could be personal. Mm -hmm. uh, I've had people uh, cry on the interview. What failure mm -hmm. or loss has helped mold the person that you are? For me, it was probably when I had, um, you know, I'm 37, I'm not a spring chicken, but I'm still fairly young too. And about, again, math not being my strong suit, I'm not sure exactly. It's probably about eight years ago, um, two hip surgeries. And damn. Yeah, tore my labrum twice. Um, same one, so I wouldn't fun. But that's really kind of hmm. forced me to redefine how you, how, myself. How do you tear it? Uh, thinking I was still 18, we used, used to <laughs> split wood. Okay. And instead of just rolling the big round like I should have, I decided I was gonna pick it up, went down, didn't come back up. I went down just the way it went. And then I tore it about a month later because I tripped and fell. Hmm. So, but that's really for and i'm still right in the middle of it man to say it's still not a struggle it is but it's forced me to redefine myself because i'm definitely a meathead at heart right. whether it's sports or exercise or fitness um that's where i kind of found my identity had some success there and it's really was who i thought i was i was i was without question going to be a firefighter or a soldier or a police officer something where 
right. kind of played into that physical role. Um, but it's funny when we have definitive plans, how quickly they change. Right. Um, so I'm still very active and I find ways to work around it, but it's really forced me to kind of redefine and reevaluate who I am. And at times, the full transparency, I hate it. You know, there's times where I, I right. want to be what I thought I was supposed to be. Um, but finding other ways to reinvent myself and to plug in and still support those people in that profession and still find ways to be active. It's and kind of really forced me to soul search and figure out, okay, this is what you thought. Right. These are the cards you're dealt. Now what? Um, so I'm right in the middle of that process and probably it will be a lifelong journey for me. Um, but it's helped me a lot and it's made me realize and kind of put me in another direction and forced my hand into things that maybe I didn't think I could do okay. or was possible and knocking down those barriers and those bridges. Um, so in a way it's kind of forced me to use this a little bit more. Right. Which I was a meathead. Right. Brick wall, run through it. Sure, no problem. Um, but now it's, you know, forced me to think how can I get around the brick wall as opposed to run through it every time. And it's it's been transforming. Um, is it, again, right, still in the middle of it. And it it's, there's still days it's a struggle, absolutely. But just kind of looking deep and finding out different ways to create myself and who I want to become. Okay. So I'm going to finish up. Uh, where do you see yourself in three years mm -hmm. and then 10 years? Three years, I'm still, in some ways, still very much a baby and you know, very much an infancy in my professional career and what I want to accomplish. And so the next three years, my head's just down. Okay. Still grinding. Okay. Um, still working, you know, with Minty Clean, again, trying to think of other ways of other passive income and how to create and get to where I want to get. Um, so in three years, I don't see a whole lot of change taking place. Just head down and keeping at the grindstone, keep working hard. In 10 years, um, I'd like to have, as we alluded to earlier, about 10 to 15 rental properties. Okay as well as continuing in the entrepreneurial world, um, growing the business and mainly being able to start traveling more. I really want to see the world, you know, for me, the pursuit of financial resources, financial freedom, whatever you want to call it, it's not for the shiny objects, you know? Right. Yes, I like boats. Yes, I like a truck. I would love to have a truck. Right. I could get a truck right now. I'm still driving my paid off beater because it's paid off. Right. And I know the truck will come. But for me, it's more about the experiences mm -hmm. um, and not necessarily change, chasing shiny objects, especially with our kids, the age they are. Like, I want to show them the world. Um, and in, in 10 years, they'll still still be, hopefully want to be a part of my life. Right. Um, and have the opportunity to have one the time and the flexibility in my schedule because, I, because of paying my dues and paying it forward. But three, have the resources to go to Italy. Right. You know, to go to Norway, to go to Australia, to just even locally there's so much of this country i haven't seen right um so in 10 years it's, it's just to be still working hard but to have the freedom of time and resources to go do what i want i could not agree more like yep. it's about experiences absolutely all right so who is your ideal client who do you who do you serve anybody watching uh or listening to this interview so what we're looking for is an, an ideal client is anyone up and down the 270 corridor you know, looking for buildings that are at minimum 30,000 square feet with a cleaning Monday through Friday. So every day? Yep, Okay. absolutely. We, we're at the point right now where we don't even entertain contracts that are less than three days a week. Okay. Just because it becomes a nightmare from a staffing standpoint. Like it's much easier to find someone who wants to work three days a week or five days a week as opposed to, hey, can you clean every other week right. one time? All right, John, so commercial cleaning. Mm -hmm. So who is your ideal client? Ideal client for us is going to be any office building, commercial building that's on the 270 corridor. Okay. That's about 30,000 square feet or more. And at minimum has three cleanings per week. Okay. So ideal you don't, world you don't, Monday through Friday. You don't do like once a week cleanings. It's We did when we started, like everyone does. Um, but we've gotten to the point now where from a staffing standpoint, it's just so much easier to staff a building three times a week up to five times a week. And then okay. Monday through Friday on your traditional schedule. Okay. And then tell us about the uh, your new client that everybody will know in Frederick. Yes, Common Market. Awesome. Um, Max, how are you, sir? We are very excited about Common Market. I eat lunch there all the time. Okay. Um, and I just was kind of in their ear 
for about a year or so. Just, hey, you guys ever need anything? You ever want a second look? And long story short, we now have that contract. Um, and very excited to be in there. It's a beautiful facility. Um, I love the people that work there. I love what they're about and bringing real food. Um, we just started that this past week with a couple hiccups. Um, so they're over there on Westview, right? Yes, off of 85 so I, next to the mall. I was driving. I'm not the mall, the, the gym. Right, by the movie theater. They're a little farther up on 85 where the Burger King is. Okay. And right. Longhorn Steakhouse, I believe, is right there. Okay, okay. And I just, I was on 7th Street the other day where the old Safeway. Yes. Is there a sign out there? Are they moving that? So, so they're, they're expanding. There? They, they, are. they, as far as a grocery store is concerned, that facility is still relatively small. Okay. And some of the issues they're having is overflow and just they need to reduce the foot traffic there by about 40 percent okay so they're building that facility is about 19,000 square feet they're building another facility off of 7th street that's going to be around 50,000 square feet gotcha. they're not replacing both are going to coexist um, but they just need to expand and there's enough demand to where they are going to have two facilities in frederick and okay. they're working on their permits right now um, they hope to be under roof and rocking and rolling in about nine months awesome awesome um, so what percentage of your business is in Frederick versus Montgomery or? Um, I would say we're probably at this point about 50-50. Okay. Working okay. on focusing primarily in Frederick. Okay. Um, just like you alluded to earlier, there's so much growth happening right now. And the further you go to DC, there's a lot more competition. competition. Right. Which I, makes I sense for that. everybody. I can see um, that. And not that there's not some great companies here in Frederick, but I feel like, you know, with the growth of Frederick and the forecast of Frederick, there's going to be a much bigger pie. Right. And there's enough room for everybody. So how would listeners, viewers find out more about Minty Clean, okay. get in touch with you? Give us your contact info. Uh, you can always email me, John, okay. J-O-N, at MintyClean.net. Um, we have a Facebook page. I have a Facebook page personally under my name. And then Minty Clean also has a Facebook page. You can always call us at 888 888- Five eight Minty. You can call the company. Um, if you have any questions, concerns, email me. Again, it's just John at MintyClean.net. Check out our website, which is www.MintyClean.net. Okay. But most of our stuff's going through Facebook, as most people do. So okay. if you have any direct questions or just message me on Facebook. Awesome, John. I appreciate you yeah, joining man, us. Absolutely. Thank for you for having me. Advice Givers, Episode One Eighty Four. John Janelle with Minty Clean. It's been fun. Thank you, Eric. And we are out. <laughs>